All right, um, welcome back to another video in the series. Um, the last thing we left off with was the tail and the uh, horizontal stabilizer there. Um, what we're gonna be doing now is the engines, uh, the engine nacelles and uh, the fan blades and such. Um, yeah, so... Um, I'm not going to work from this upper diagram this time. I'm going to go from the bottom just because it's kind of more clear. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to start off with a cylinder. Again, 32 vertices, just to keep it uh, nice and organized throughout the model. And uh, we're just going to look at the front of the engine here, but um, scale it slightly less than what you think it would be because we're gonna round out the engine inside and such. Um, so yeah, grab the back piece. Uh, there we go. Throw it there. Uh, actually, one thing I need to put on is this screencast thing so you guys can see what I'm pressing and such. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, okay. Let's see. Keep that there for now. Basically, all we're doing is just making loop cuts, um, dragging them out. Um, it's kind of the same, honestly, with every with every um, cylinder type shape you're gonna you're gonna be working with. They're all very similar in terms of how you're going to approach them. And let's see, actually this one's a little different. Let's go there. There. Now we're going to subdivide this of course just to get a more even looking shape throughout the uh, engine nacelle. Some minor adjustments here and there. Cool. We're going to go ahead and hit scale now. Um, and one thing, so actually this uh, this front part of the engine we can scale up because we're going to be beveling it which means that it's going to shrink that furthest forward loop cut. As you can see, it'll shrink it. So um, what I'm going to do first is actually rotate it so that it matches the uh, angle there. Then we're going to hit bevel and just give yourself a couple of cuts there for now. Um, let's see, where are we? Because the subdivide will um, play a role in the, the curvature of everything. Um, okay, so that looks good so far. Um, that's kind of what the engine will look like. Um, so this is kind of where you have to make a decision of whether to subdivide it now or subdivide it once you have the insides kind of gutted out here. Um, <clears throat> excuse my voice, I don't know what's going on with it. Uh, so what we can do now is actually grab this inset faces tool. What this is going to do is just make uh, a little inset there and in that face specifically. Now we can bring it back to kind of match our previous loop cuts. So we'll line him up with this one. Continue to kind of wrap it around back into the engine. And let's see, is there any more? No, that's it. So we'll do one more. Move it back a bit. And then we will just extrude this. Actually, maybe I won't. What are we going to do? 
Let's actually duplicate that face. Since it's on an angle, I'm not going to bother with, um, with that. So we're just going to go ahead and bridge those together. I'm just pushing that back for now just so we kind of get uh, the idea of where everything's going to sit inside the engine. Um, so that is, I guess, kind of what the engine will look like. bring it forward a little yeah so that's the generic shape we're looking for you might not even need to subdivide this to be honest the mesh is already looking decent right, what I can probably do is since that some of this stuff here is uh, not as spread out I can probably just go and do that and then we'll bridge these together and then that way we have an even evenly spread mesh for the most part <laughs> it's not exact yeah that'll do uh, okay now what we're gonna do delete this face in there delete the back end off subdivide that's just gonna add some more mesh to it smoothen it out um, and then, yeah, so when you're doing this, keep in mind that um, not every engine's the same and that you are going to find a lot of differences um, regarding kind of how they're shaped out in the, the front here. So that could be a little less round, could be more, I don't know. Kind of looks flat there to be honest. Um, but we're, we're just going to go with that for now. Um, I'm, I'm happy with that as it stands. So if we take this now, we're going to apply that subdivision. Actually now that I'm looking at it, almost everything we have here is... Uh, Where did that original, oh, it's okay, it's in there. I'll throw that back up in the collection. All right, okay, um, back here, we're gonna do one of two things. First being, we need to make these chevrons back here. Um, and the way we're gonna do that uh, is, well, we're gonna look at a picture, obviously. Now, I've already counted the amount of chevrons here. We have 17, actually, there's less than that, but, um, if we, if we look here, the chevrons are all evenly spaced out, but we have these little lips in here. So I just said there's two extra up here. That'll make for the amount of space it's doing between the uh, connection to the wing and the engine. And then I just said there's probably one down there. So um, we're just going to go with 17 chevrons. So how do we do that now? So we have a 64 vert, um, what should I call it? 64 vertice uh, cylinder there. So if I go to my calculator, I type in 64 divided by 17. Uh, it's gonna give me 3.764 blah, blah, blah. So in other words, every third every th <laughs> this is where it gets confusing and this is where you may need may want to select a, a vert count for your cylinder that is a multiple of however many chevrons you have here so if we have 17 we could multiply that by like six or maybe not that much say four so ideally we would have had a 68 vertice engine here that would give us a multiple of 17 uh, 17 chevrons so um, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna redo this from scratch so we have a 68 vertice um, 
engine. Okay, uh, we'll just pause it and be right back. <laughs> okay, so uh, here we are now with a 68 vertice engine. Uh, I just kind of redid the one I, I had set out before. Um, so yeah, onto the chevrons now. Get your calculator out. We've got 68 vertices divided by 17 chevrons. Gives us every fourth vertice we're gonna have a uh, chevron. So, um, let's see, how can I do this so that it's one, two, three, four, Oh, actually, wait. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'm just kind of counting in my head. <laughs> one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four. Perfect. Okay, so that should be 17. Let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17. Yeah, so 17 uh, chevrons there. Um, so we're going to drag them out and then scale down a little bit. Okay, now I did kind of go a little far out with the. Um, I did go a little far out with the uh, the back end of this, so I'm gonna just shrink it, take everything but the chevrons out. Get good. We'll pull that back and scale it up. Okay, so that's kind of what we're looking at now for the chevrons. Okay, perfect. Actually, that's going to look awesome. So it looks awful right now, I know, don't worry. Uh, what we're going to do is just kind of select everything in here. That's not in the middle of these two. So the uh, outer points of these chevrons. And then simply go like this actually if I look at a picture of the actual engine it's kinda like that um, yeah so yeah actually not bad Just thinking of something here. One second. So the bottom. Uh, yeah, we should be fine. Yeah. Okay. Should be fine. Could be an issue, but if there's, uh, hopefully there's not an issue. Um, if I just go ahead and make this solid. Might add a little weird layer though. That may add a, a, a bad layer inside here. So let's see, what can we do? What if I go like this and bridge that with this? Oh, perfect. Now, if I wanted to bevel that, I can. Great. So select all these inside pieces. Now we're going to go control B and just round it out a bit. Kind of like so. Now 
Now it is going to add some interesting looking topology here. It shouldn't, it doesn't uh, affect anything. Um, but if you're not happy with the way that looks, then of course go ahead and change it. I'm not going to bother because I don't see any problems with it. And then the chevrons are a little pointier up here, so we can kind of actually, I'm going to bring them forward a bit more, shrink them a little bit. Then we're going to round them out like that. Cool, happy with that. Now, lastly, I'm going to grab these points. How can I make those a little? Uh, I might not be able to do anything with these actually. Actually, I could bring them out. And then just shrink them a bit. Yeah, okay, perfect. Um, that looks good to me. There may be a little bit of weird stuff going on there. But uh, if, if, if you don't if you don't really care, then it, it's gonna look good, so. That's what we're at now. If we look from a wing view, kind of, yeah, it's coming along. I feel like the engines might be sitting back more. Um, yeah, I'm good with that. So we're gonna go ahead and say now is. This could get a little tricky. I'm gonna delete that little thickness layer we just made. I only had that so we could bevel the uh, insides and stuff. You can't bevel on a flat surface because it's only one-sided. Um, yeah, so what we're gonna do now is if I do solidify this, that's what I would want except it's going to add an inner layer in this engine. Actually, you know what? That'll be good. Because then, if the user goes inside of the engine, they'll have a perfect looking engine. And there will be normals there that they can see. So I'm good with that. Uh, what did I just do? Oh, I turned on the uh, x-ray X-ray mode. Um, as far as those wings go, you actually probably could boolean them right into the wing box there. Now that I think about it, let's try it. Boolean there. Should be fine. Yeah. Okay. That'll that'll do. That'll be good for that. Um, and we can probably do that over here too. Uh, do I want to mirror that? Yeah. Sure. Why not? Boolean. This. Not going to be a perfect cut, but a pretty good one. Inspect it from all views. Yeah, okay, we're good. Um, back to the engine. I got sidetracked there. Back to the engine we go. We're going to go ahead now and do the fan blades. So if I just go ahead, grab that. Uh, oh, I, for I forgot this was uh, solidified. So if I just make this whole face duplicate it, make it its own object just for a minute so we can set the origin to it. Then we can snap the cursor there. Get rid of that. Now comes the fun. So. Again, looking at uh, diagrams and such, we have to start with, uh, oh, actually, we'll set that back to 32. 
wrong way. Now we're gonna make the pylon. Now something you may want to do for this is to get a picture kind of like this that you can use while modeling the engine. There might be a better one actually. Is this a GNX? Sure, that's the same thing, isn't it? Doesn't say what it is. We just want the engine. So find a picture that you can look straight on it and be happy with. I think I'm happy enough with this. So I'm just gonna save that to my uh, desktop or somewhere kind of like that. Desktop, sure, why not? Uh, we're gonna drag it in here, shrink it so it matches the inside of, uh, let's bring it up a bit. So it matches the inside of our uh, engine. So right about there. We'll push it back now. Maybe a little more forward. Cool. Now we're going to match that up. Go a little more this way. A little more. A little bit down. Okay, perfect. Actually, yeah, I'm good with that. Now, what we're gonna do is get a picture of that engine from the side. It's not gonna be that long. It's more of like a cube shape. Shrink that all the way down to as far as you can see, really. Maybe even a little more like this. Make a couple loop cuts just to start off. We'll leave that one there. This one kind of comes up a bit. Actually, we can improve that a little. And this rounds off at the top. Sort of like that, actually. Now, you don't need to worry about adding too many cuts in here. Just for the reason that uh, it's already pretty smooth and it's something that someone won't really look at when checking out the modeling of something of an engine especially try to reduce your vertice count as much as you can when you're uh, in areas people don't usually look at so in this case that is plenty of vertices so that's good. Now what we're gonna do is make these fan blades, which is a interesting, <laughs> interesting uh, shape to make. So I'm just gonna start off by doing something like kind of like this. Actually, it builds off of that. So we'll go up, kind of down. Maybe I'll rotate that. Just kind of scale it so it matches this bottom piece here, is what we're looking for. We'll slightly angle it. Actually, it might need to go. It's hard to know the, uh, the width of an engine, especially when you don't have a uh, so I can probably find a diagram on it if I just look for a second. Oh, okay. Uh, that works, I guess. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, so... That's probably good there. Um, we'll skinny it up a little bit. Now we'll drag that to the top. What you're going to notice here is actually the angle of it points to the left. So 
pointing to the left. We're going to increase that. Which way? How do we want to do this? Hold on, disregard. We're going to thin it out as much as we can. Angle it so it catches the air. Sort of like this now. And then sideways. A little bit that way. A little more. Lots of trial and error with these blades here. You'll notice. Um, where's this back face? We're just going to bring this back face out. Oh, actually, since that's thickened, bring both of those back. Uh huh. That looks good. Uh, we'll make a cut down here, bring it a little bit forward, a little to the side. Actually, now I can bend that inward, so it kind of matches up with that. It actually is angled a bit. Cool. A little more this way we go. Now, as we go up, the shape is going to change, of course. So what was this one? That actually looks pretty good. I feel like it may need to be bigger though. Maybe not. I think I brought that back too far. Yeah, I definitely did. Uh, back to this guy. Make him a little smaller. And bent back. I'm going to make him smaller too, actually. But we're just going to increase the scale in certain places. I'm just going to shade it smooth. The, these fan blades are, are very um, they're very oddly shaped they're very hard to model correctly you will never be able to actually model them correctly I don't think just because it's so crowded in that engine you're not going to find any I mean you might but you probably won't find any uh, good source of documents on it. And something like this so far. The top, it's actually kind of what we have uh, right now. Maybe a little bit more straight up though. But just a little more. Yeah, that'll work. Just keep checking your angles and making sure it's all sort of lining up how you want it to. I'm not going to do too much here since it's already kind of in the uh, the twist. slightly increase those though um, yeah so up here 
I don't know if I turn this on if it'll it'll kind of mess with the whole thing, but it will give me that that. Ooh, actually, this could be good. If I go like this now, that just gave me the angle I wanted. I just, okay, so if you want to do that, I don't recommend doing it with mesh usually, but you press this little guy and then if you just drag any vertice, it'll kind of follow along with it. Probably not a good idea though, normally. Um, definitely not a good idea just to do that all the time uh, because you're gonna have to <laughs> adjust some things depending on what you're modeling. Kind of like what you're seeing right now. Um, yeah, this stuff is all, it's annoying to model, to say the least. We'll go with that, and then we'll get rid of those faces at the top. Join some of these together. Just press F. There. Um, okay, now how many fan blades do we have to do? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 fan blades. So 360 divided by 18 is 20. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go set this to the 3d cursor in mesh mode or in sorry edit mode we're gonna duplicate that uh, rotate 20 degrees like that. all right I think that's fine yeah uh, yeah okay that looks good so just keep duplicating these 20 degrees, 20, 20, 20. You'll notice it's matching up with the diagram too, which is good. You could do an array modifier. Um, I just prefer to do it this way because the array modifiers have given me troubles in the past. So that's our engine right now. It's looking good. Um, what's the next step from here? Uh, next step from here, I'm actually going to do something with the back of this. Does that have a face on it? Yeah, it does. So with this back of the, the cone there, I'm just going to extrude it out just to give us some depth in there. Get rid of that for now. I might actually just grab the bottoms of those and bring them in a little closer. Yeah, so 
that's what the fan blades look like. And if we look at our diagram, it kind of matches it, sort of. Actually, it matches it pretty well. Um, now, if you wanted to, you could put a material on it just to, for now for something to look at. That looks cool. Looks kind of cool. Just put the same one on it. Hello? There. So that's the engine ish. There's obviously a lot more to do inside the engine. Um. All right, we still needed to do a couple things with the chevrons. Where did that picture go that I wanted? That one. So now this is something you'll probably have to do when you have the wing connection. Um, hmm. I usually just throw a, a a back onto that just to make it have some depth. But excuse me. Um, you could do that another time or get rid of it. Is what I meant to say. I don't even know what I'm saying half the time. I'm trying to explain things, but I have stuff going on in my mind. <laughs> yeah. So. If you wanted to, you could set the 3D cursor to zero. Set that as your origin. Actually, that's probably not a good idea. Disregard. <laughs> we can duplicate the engine. Put it at positive 11.94. I'm just going to connect those, to be honest. Duplicate those, also the same thing. Now you have your engines on either side of the airplane. Just to look at. Obviously there's still more to do to, to the engines, but you could have that set up as a reference. Just thinking how this is gonna connect. It's gonna go down, then towards the engine, then up and connect okay I'm gonna go grab a drink I'll be right back um, let's see now got my seven up good to go hello dog <laughs> okay uh, the next part we're going to attack is this area here. So, um, just want to make sure that this is in fact the G in NX. It does look like it to me. Okay. I'll just make it sure because I know there is like stuff like the Trents and whatever. Okay, um, snap, pressure just selected. We're gonna go make another cylinder, rotate it. Find the end of, actually I guess it would be this. Oops, don't want it on that still. Right there. Now, I don't actually think this is symmetrical, but it may be. Doesn't it just kind of go like this? I think. Shade. Make a new a loop cut in there just to get rid of some of that lining stuff like that. Um, and then from there, grab that inset faces tool again. Just make the slightest little inset. 
and then extrude it way back. And um, and from there, what we can do is just duplicate that face, bring it to the end of whatever this cone looking thing is, the exhaust, I guess you could call it. Um, and then we're just gonna bridge the loops there. And I would prefer to get rid of that face. Uh, oh, actually look at that, it's already gone, okay. Perfect. Except we just gotta make a couple cuts in there to get rid of that weird geometry. Two, three, four, we'll make five. Five looks good. Now that's not gonna be, we're gonna have to inset those faces too. So we'll inset slightly and then extrude enough back so that if you were to texture it, no one would be able to tell that that just ends there. Uh, now it does look to me that I made that a little small, which I did. So grab that. Um, actually, I'm gonna kind of redo some of this. Get rid of all those, grab that gonna move it more forward bridge now look okay needs to come more forward there okay now we can make a couple of cuts that looks much better So yeah, that is gonna be it for the engines. Um, if, well, for now at least. If you actually wanted to get the diameter of the, or sorry, not the diameter, the uh, radius of the, or not the, what is that called? The length of each fan blade you could probably find that information somewhere. Fan blade dimension. I'm sure you could find that information somewhere. Yeah, uh, fan diameter, 282 centimeters. Um, yeah, 282 centimeters, so it's probably not this. Pretty close actually. 257, 256. So if I just increase that 282, it'd be that. So that would that would be the actual dimension of that. So I might just fix that in the off time when I'm not recording. Uh, and I think I actually put that too far back, so... Yeah, so it should be a little more forward, kind of more like there. And uh, uh, maybe a little bit less than that. <laughs> a little less. Sure, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of that for now. So that's where we are now. Um, I'm just gonna edit that a little bit so that, you know, we have the proper dimension for the fan blades. It's probably best to start with the fan blades and then build the engine around that. But I don't know, it doesn't really matter. You can always go ahead and tweak it after, after you've done it. Uh, so that's where we are now. And um, I'll be back in the next video with something else i don't know what that something else is going to be possibly that engine to wing connection um we'll see anyway uh that's it for this video 
and uh, I'll see you in the next one.